Many of you remember us uh, as a player in the rare earth space. We're still a believer in uh, rare earths, but right now we're uh, transitioning back to our roots, which was a lithium that was ha got Avalon oriented in this wonderful world, especially minerals, uh, over 20 years ago. And uh, I see our separation rapids project now as being the opportunity that's creating the platform for real growth and creating a sustainable business uh, going forward. So that's what I'm going to talk about here today. Before I do that, I remind you not to rely on any of the many uh, forward-looking statements that I'm going to make. And you've heard this message uh, a couple times this morning, uh, most articulately, I think, from Amanda there earlier, but uh, I will restate it because I don't think you can overstate this very important key message about messages about how different the specialty mineral sector is from the traditional uh, a mining business, and that is the kind of approach you have to take to creating a real business it involves product design, as you heard from uh, Amanda, working with your customers, understanding what their needs are, and creating a product that will meet their needs. Doing that and uh, using an efficient process, which in the case of minerals involves creating an innovative extraction process, and trying to produce the best quality product at the lowest possible cost. In order to do that, you've got to be prepared to start that business at a small scale so you can start producing that product in small quantities, introduce it to the market, get it accepted by your customers, get those offtake commitments that will allow you to scale up and create a real uh, business. And in this day and age, if you're going to serve the um, uh, clean tech community, you better do it in a sustainable way and try to do it by minimizing environmental impacts, making maximum use of the resource, and uh, <clears throat> not creating any uh, uh, undesirable waste materials. So those are the principles that are, are we're going to uh, take in, in uh, creating a real business here going forward. If you're saying to yourself, well, that doesn't sound like a mining business, that sounds like a tech business, you're right, that's really what it is. But you do need a resource, and um, <clears throat> We've had this one for uh, 20 years now. When we first discovered it back in the uh, mid-1990s, it was a brand new discovery of a rare form of lithium pegmatite, an LCT type of the very highly fractionated type that contains uh, petalite and lipidolite as the dominant uh, lithium minerals as opposed to uh, spodumene. And when we found it, it was a brand new find. No one had ever found a petalite resource in uh, North America before of any consequence. And petalite is the preferred source of mineral for thermal shock resistant glass ceramics. So at that time, that was the opportunity we saw to uh, potentially develop it. And we were on our way to uh, doing that. But unfortunately, the, the market changed in North America in a way that we were not able to adapt to. And we weren't able to uh, get it off the ground then. <clears throat> but um, I knew it would have another day. At that time, the lithium-ion battery was around, but um, was still in its infancy as a new technology. It wasn't a big enough market for us to serve yet, but I knew it would have, it would grow, and uh, sure enough, we're seeing that opportunity uh, created for us now to look at that as a new market. But as I'll show you shortly, uh, we haven't given up on that glass market either. That's, uh, that's a very interesting opportunity for us still as well. But in the meantime, we've uh, continued to do some work on it. We have a very secure tenure under a mining lease there now, 100% ownership of the asset with uh, large land positioning, offering uh, lots of exploration possibilities, good access, road access. Uh, we've been there so long, everybody in the community in Northwestern Ontario knows us very well, a great relationship with the First Nation. And as you'll see, that's the resource outlined in that photo as it appeared in 1998. Uh, right at surface, everything in white is the, uh, is the pegmatite readily amenable to development by simple uh, open pit type mining methods. And these pegmatites, one of the benefits of them is they don't um, contain anything that constitutes a, a toxic waste material of concern to the environment. So just uh, on our location, we're up in northwestern Ontario, about 70 kilometers north of the community of uh, Kenora on the Lake of the Woods, a community of about uh, 15,000 people, and swells in the summer with all the Manitobans that come to their cottages on the uh, Lake of the Woods. 
but good infrastructure in that both railways go through Kenora area, there's uh, natural gas available there and, and hydropower generated on the English River just downstream from us from two different dams that offer that possibility as well as other potential clean power generation possibilities um, uh, for us. So what have we been doing the last couple of years? Well, in the early years, uh, all of the work was oriented towards the producing an industrial mineral for glass. Uh, we never really looked at the battery market as an opportunity. And so when we started to consider that as a possibility a few years ago, we had to kind of take a step back. And we also realized that uh, no one had ever made a battery material from petalite before, so there was no existing uh, process flow sheet out there. So we had to uh, uh, do a bulk sample, produce some concentrate again, and then create our own uh, process, which was led by uh, Dave Marsh, our metallurgist, who's uh, here today. And uh, we chose lithium hydroxide as a target uh, for our PEA, just because that seemed to be where the best opportunity was to create a product at a competitive cost from this uh, particular mineral. But we also know we could make lithium carbonate too, so that's one of the reasons why you want to do a demo plant, is to look at where you can best fit into the market and design the product uh, accordingly. And like I say, we haven't forgotten about the glass market. We uh, processed about 30 tons of ore, which gave us lots of concentrate to do that hydromet process development, but it also gave us samples to provide to the glass customers who remain interested in this uh, material to uh, reconfirm its suitability in uh, some of their, uh, their products. So then we did a PEA, <clears throat> and really the purpose of the PEA was just to show ourselves and the market that uh, this represented an attractive economic development opportunity uh, for uh, this resource. It's by no means the final answer. There's quite a bit more work to do to determine what's the appropriate scale and mix of products here, but it showed us right off the bat that we could make a lithium hydroxide product for petalite, and it does produce attractive uh, economics. Uh, the most important part of it really is the production costs, and while um, our average cost, as determined here, isn't quite as low as what Namask have been able to achieve. It's certainly better than um, others that are producing lithium hydroxide from Brian's, as his slide, uh, Guy's slide showed earlier. But also of interest is uh, we did this a year ago, and um, we used a um, price assumption of $11,000 a ton for lithium hydroxide. That's already out of date. And, uh, Others are saying the pricing now is um, more like fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars a ton. If you use that in our uh, DCF model, <clears throat> you get um, quite a bit higher IRRs and NPVs. But coming back to the market, <clears throat> while batteries are the main story, and there's no question that's where most of the demand growth is coming from. You can't forget about these other markets because they're still very significant and they are growing as well. And the glass market actually has been traditionally the biggest consumer of uh, lithium. It's only been in the last year or two that battery demand has surpassed glass as a use of uh, lithium on a percentage basis. And while it's going to grow faster, there is still growth, uh, a lot of growth in the, uh, in the glass market um, for lithium as well, and a lot of other uses. Uh, Guy Barrasso reminded me at, a, at another meeting that um, the use of lithium hydroxide in lubricating greases is still growing and there's concern there about uh, there being enough supply now. And we've heard a little bit about metal alloys and lithium aluminum alloys is another uh, um, growth opportunity. And many of these cases it's about how lithium can make a lighter weight material which is we've heard already is one of the goals in the automotive sector with electric vehicles of reducing the overall weight of the car. And what we're finding now is that uh, lithium can contribute to those electric vehicles, not only in the battery, but also to that weight solution. And there could end up being just as much lithium or more in the body of the car as there is in the battery. So not to be forgotten about as, as significant markets. Well, the glass market is one that uh, we keep a close eye on because pedalite is still the preferred source of mineral to introduce into a glass batch. And that's because it has basically nothing else in it except lithium, alumina, and silica, which are all ingredients they need in the glass batch. So it's kind of a pre-mixed 
uh, material <coughs> that um, provides it all in, a, um, in a, a ready solution and does not contain any iron, which is a major contaminant in, uh, in glass. So that's what they want. And that's um, increasingly hard to find as the battery industry is just basically soaking up all the supply of uh, lithium right now, leaving the glass industry kind of scrambling for, uh, for supplies and materials. And while there are traditional products such as stovetops, cookware, and fireplace shields, there's a lot of innovation happening in the glass sector too. One product you've probably heard about is Gorilla Glass, Corning's new high-strength glass product that uh, Apple are using in their iPhones and other products now, as we've talked about, is windshield glass. Guess what is the key ingredient to make that, um, uh, that glass stronger? And that's just one example of a whole lot of innovative new high-strength glass products that uh, will require lithium. And lastly, it can contribute in a positive way in terms of the environment in that um, lithium additions to a glass batch for soda lime glass reduces the melting temperature and therefore the amount of energy used and greenhouse gas emissions that would come from the furnace. And uh, the other thing we have in this resource is a second lithium mineral actually called lipidolite, that's of lithium mica. It actually contains uh, quite a bit more lithium than pedalite does. Pedalite has about four and a half uh, percent lithium oxide on average. Spody means usually six or so, and lipidolite actually has about eight, at least a dozen uh, separation rapids. So this is actually offering us possibility of a second lithium mineral concentrate we can make from the same resource from which we could derive a lithium chemical as well, as well as uh, other uh, byproducts, including uh, rubidium and cesium. So we're now starting to factor this into our uh, development plan as well. And uh, <clears throat> that's a quick geological map. The area in black line, the outline there, is the area I showed you in the photo earlier of the main mass of the outcrop area. But all the extensions shown in purple there are lipidolite-rich components of the resource that we've never really fully accounted for in the, uh, in the economics. So we're actually doing a little bit of drilling there now to update our resource to better account for that uh, going forward. <clears throat> the um, resources as originally reported, this was based on all the drilling we did back in the 90s, just looked at the lithium content as it's traditionally reported in an NI43101 resource. But actually what would be more meaningful for us and for most uh, such resources is actually report it in terms of the mineral content and because um, the lithium actually is an aggregate of the lithium and the different minerals. So that's what we will be able to do now thanks to the emergence of a lot of new tools, scanning technology, etc. that can allow you to differentiate between the different minerals in the uh, resource quantify them and integrate that into your, uh, into your resource. So what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to move forward with that plan on the demonstration plant as uh, quickly as we can. We're engaging with the downstream, talking to our customers, understanding their needs so we could establish uh, a fairly large demonstration plant. Same kind of um, idea as, um, as Namaska had, build it big enough that you can start making enough quantity of the material to introduce it to your customers, get it accepted and start to perhaps even supply some of their uh, initial needs and uh, optimize your flow sheets to get the different products on spec. And if we're able to do that, then we could have, uh, get this financed in the next uh, little while here. We'll be able to get this up and running by the end of 2018. And, gives us an opportunity to initiate small-scale production and then potentially scale up from there as we get uh, better uh, accepted in the marketplace and perhaps reach full production in 2021. Uh, it's kind of a complicated slide, but uh, just it's brief. basically the main message here is just how many potential products that we have that we can pull out of this resource in the interest of sustainability and maximizing revenues and reducing waste. So it is a bit complicated and uh, that's the value of the uh, phase one demonstration plant is to allow us to produce a little bit of each and test the market and then finally decide on what the, uh, the best process flow sheet would be for this particular resource. So the next big step for us is to uh, go ahead with this um, uh, phase one plant. We've scaled it at 90,000 tons per year. That would allow us to produce um, a fair quantity of both pedalite and lipidolite 
so we can start supplying our, um, our customers' needs on an ongoing basis once they've um, accepted the, uh, the product specifications and also um, uh, start to produce some of the uh, byproducts and test some of the other technology that can be applied. Uh, we will be looking at just starting to quarry the source, uh, the resources you saw it there earlier, it will be easily accessed. We see uh, putting this demo plant in Kenora, where we've already identified a, an industrial site that would be well suited for it. It's actually an old paper mill, again, uh, kind of like what uh, Damascus does, take advantage of old infrastructure that can be repurposed for uh, uh, this new, uh, whole new emerging business sector. So that has all the infrastructure that we need to um, establish such a facility. We can truck the ore to Kenora, take the tailings back to the site for disposal, and have a hydromet component to the pilot plant to, uh, to develop the processes we need to define the exact uh, lithium battery material products that, uh, that we want to uh, produce. So we want to work with the downstream and see if we can um, be creative on that and uh, define what battery industry is going to need next and work with them on developing those uh, new product ideas. And so we have this kind of interesting opportunity to uh, serve multiple markets from the same resource. We have the potential to make hydroxide from pedalite, we can make lithium carbonate from lipidolite, and we can make high purity lithium minerals for glass ceramics and a bunch of other uh, byproducts to serve other markets. So it's, uh, it's a resource that's offering lots of possibilities and um, we're on it to create most value that we possibly can for our shareholders going forward and thank you for your attention here today.